Hi, welcome to our second class. Today we'll be discussing early labour, which is also known as the latent phase of labour. We're going to explore some coping strategies that will help you stay at home until you go into established labour, which we're going to discuss in the next session. Women experience the latent phase of labour very differently. Some may not even realise they're in labour, whereas for others it could last for days, which can be both stressful and tiring. So what's actually happening in the latent phase of labour? Your cervix, which is the neck of your uterus, is made up of strong muscles and it's about two to three centimetres long. During the latent phase, your cervix is shortening and then opening up to about four centimetres. At four centimetres, you're in established labour. During this time, you may be experiencing irregular contractions that can vary in length and strength, lasting anything between 20 and 40 seconds. Contractions are different to Braxton Hitch contractions, which you may have been experiencing on and off throughout your third trimester. There's no real pattern to Braxton Hicks. They're infrequent and they often subside if you change position or activity. Your bump will feel tight, but it shouldn't feel painful. Contractions, on the other hand, become more regular and increase in frequency and strength. There are other signs that you may be in early labour. For example, the mucus plug that has sealed your cervix shut in pregnancy may be released as your cervix shortens. It should be a clear, sticky and glutinous texture, possibly streaked with brown or pink flecks, which is normal. If it has bright red blood in it and you're bleeding, this is not normal and you should definitely contact your midwife, day or night. Some women lose their plug in the weeks before labour. Don't worry if this is you, it's simply a sign that your cervix is softening. Other signs could be having loose bowel movements and needing to poo more frequently, experiencing period-like pains and lower backache, loss of appetite, or simply feeling a little odd. Now we're going to take a look at what happens when your waters break. You can be forgiven for thinking that your waters breaking are a key sign that you're going into labour, as every birth scene in a film starts with a woman's waters breaking, followed by the birth of her baby about five minutes later. Safe to say this isn't what generally happens. Your waters could break before you go into labour, but often they break during labour, or in some cases they may not break at all and your baby could be born in their amniotic sac. When your waters do break, you may get a large gush of fluid or just a trickle. It depends on the position of your baby's head on your cervix. The fluid should be cloudy white or straw coloured and not smell offensive. If the fluid is any other colour or smells really bad, it could be a sign of a problem. Whatever the situation is, contact your midwife if you think your waters have broken. They will want to see you to confirm this is the case. And if you're not in established labour, they'll book you in for an induction 24 hours later, as recommended by the NICE guidelines. This is because the risk of your baby getting an infection rises as the amniotic sac is no longer sealed. 60% of women whose waters break will go into labour within that 24 hour period, so try not to worry. Instead, focus on building up your oxytocin levels, which will help kickstart labour. It's absolutely fine to shower and bath once your waters are broken, but you shouldn't have sex as this can increase the risk of infection. Finally, you'll need to stock up on thick maternity pads as your body keeps producing amniotic fluid until your baby is born. Regular pe period pads won't be enough. It's not uncommon to hear of a pregnant woman going into a hospital or the birth centre, thinking she's in labour only to be turned away because she isn't in established labour. In other words, about four centimetres dilated. This can be really tough but it's not your midwife being mean. Studies show that women admitted into hospital in the latent phase of labour are more likely to have an obstetric intervention. 
so it's advisable to stay at home during this part of labour. If you're expecting twins or more, it's different. Let your midwife know as soon as you start having contractions and you'll be invited into the unit straight away. For those not having twins, research shows that good support from your birth partner, an understanding of what's happening in your body and some coping strategies to use at home should help you remain at home during this period. Firstly, try to main, remain calm and relaxed because it will help your oxytocin levels. Oxytocin is known as the love hormone. It is released when you feel safe and happy and it's really important in labour as it helps your body create strong, powerful contractions. A good job for your birth partner at this stage is to help you create a really calm environment that makes you feel relaxed and happy. That could be a room full of candles, a comfy seating area in the garden, or simply bringing you breakfast in bed. Figure out what works best for you. If you're feeling stressed or worried, your body produces adrenaline. This hormone suppresses the release of oxytocin and it can slow down your labour. So in the latent phase, distraction is key. Dig out your favourite box set. Think rom-com rather than horror. Don't focus on your contractions until they're five to ten minutes apart. And try to continue with your normal daily activities as much as possible. Eating proper meals and staying well hydrated as you'll need good energy levels for established labour. Rest and sleep as much as possible too. Getting out for a walk or using some simple birth positions will help get your baby's head into a position that puts pressure on your cervix, encouraging it to dilate and it can alleviate lower back pain. Download our Communicating Your Birth Preferences booklet for a double page spread of birth positions that you can use throughout labour. New Life, it's from www.newlifeclasses.com forward slash bounty. There are plenty of other pain relief options that you can use at home. The NICE guidelines recommend breathing exercises, immersion in water and massage for early labour. You can also buy or rent a TENS machine and start taking paracetamol. Just keep a record of how much you've taken in 24 hours as your midwife will ask you. So the final thing we're going to take a quick look at in today's session is some of the reasons to contact your midwife. Call when you're in early labour and your contractions have become regular and powerful and you feel like you need some extra support. Your midwife will assess you over the phone and take an individualised approach to when is the right time for you to come into your chosen birth unit. For some, this may mean that your contractions are five minutes apart for others, they may be more frequent. If you're having twins or multiples, call your midwife as soon as you start experiencing contractions. And always call if you think your waters might have broken, you're experiencing any bleeding, you're experiencing painful, constant abdominal pains, you feel that your baby's movements have reduced or changed, and finally, if there's anything that you're worried about or you want to talk through, you can always call your midwife and get answers and put your mind at rest. That's it for today's session. The next session will explore established labour and your pain relief options. I look forward to seeing you then.